High Street. Hello, High Street. Hey, guys. Good morning, High Street. Okay, hello, friends. Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, guys. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, High Street. Hello, High Street. Hey, High Street. Good morning, High Street. Hi, church. We're trying this for the third time. Hey, High Street. Hello, High Street Community Church. Good morning, family. Hello, High Street. Hello, this is Carol. Good morning, High Street. I miss you all. Hello, everyone. We're missing you greatly. Hi, everybody. Hi, High Street. Okay. of feasting, I would say we've had lots of interesting salads that we've made for dinner. Some with meat, some without, but lots of really cool ingredients that have been very tasty. And I have to say, it's eating at home. It's the home food. And uh, my son actually and my wife made these biscuits together yesterday and we had strawberries and short, yeah, kind of like shortbread and it was amazing, it was so good. Question, the best food that I've eaten recently was tempura fried avocado. It's delicious, I'd highly recommend it. From Lily Hunter, favorite food, scrambled eggs with different accompanied foods, whatever is in the fridge or on shelves. Creativity, anyone? Today I wanted to talk about our feast. Um, Jeff and I made bread, um, our first bread. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a crater bread, and uh, we really appreciated the extra reset um, in our late night one night. Um, I enjoy it with rhubarb strawberry jam, that is Jeff's favorite, and butter, and a little bit of coffee. My family love pastica. Now I have a plenty of time to make it. One of the foods I've been enjoying during this time has been homemade gluten-free sourdough waffles. It's our new Saturday morning tradition. My favorite meal during the last couple of months was Mother's Day. We got takeout from one of our favorite local Thai places, Salas Tea by the Sea. Some green curry, pineapple fried rice, and pad thai. It was great to have that treat. For feasts, today is actually Gordon's birthday. I am making for dinner tonight a pizza it was one of our favorite things, so pizza and dark beer, and I'll bet it'll be my favorite dinner during uh, this lockdown. My favorite snack during quarantine has been sweet potato fries. Ranch dressing, heck yeah, so good. Well, my best feast was my first harvest of bok choy. My brand new garden. I'm having so much fun gardening, it's just great. Gardens are growing everywhere around here. Well, we already did that. Yeah, but you need to tell the camera now. Um. Macaroni and cheese and fish sticks. So our go-to has been Mexican food, usually. Tacos, burritos, nice big healthy salad. We've kind of made our grocery shopping pretty basic and healthy which is our favorite. I'd like to make it a plural feast because I was blessed to be invited to friends' home every Wednesday evening to have dinner during this special time. And each one was a feast. I've loved eating lamb cooked on our cast iron with a pomegranate vinaigrette glaze. And I have to say that I love my wife's uh, peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies. Boy, they're, they're awesome. I think uh, they, they barely make it uh, past a day after she bakes a couple dozen. Quesadillas. A deep dish vegetarian pizza. Uh, we got some sourdough starter from Michael Cahalan and I turned it into a sourdough pizza crust and it was really, really good. My favorite meal is a large mocha frappe from McDonald's with anything. <laughs> Uh, last week sometime, our next door neighbor went out fishing on his boat and he brought back this enormous salmon and he decided to share it with our family. So we got to have fresh salmon that Jason cooked out on the Traeger. It was delicious. We've been grilling a lot more and eating outside. It's really been nice to be outside. Um, my husband has been learning to cook since he retired and he makes one mean kung pao tofu that I really enjoy. I have to say my favorite food was the dinner we had lasagna. 
Yesterday I bought a couple of my favorite foods at Costco, some Hot Pockets and some corn dogs. So yes, we have high haute cuisine here at the Barthel family residence. Um, my favorite meal since the coronavirus has started is Chinese food that we made together. My favorite food has been fresh greens right out of the garden. We've been trying to support some of our local restaurants uh, by doing takeout once a week or so. And on Mother's Day, Janelle requested Giatella's, which is a local Cambodian restaurant up here in Scotts Valley. And Sam and I cleared a path to a picnic bench, I'm there right now, uh, set up some candles and a tablecloth and just had a great meal. Uh, but the prep was really rewarding uh, to eat and the food was amazing. My greatest feast was um, Mother's Day at our daughter's home, making a beautiful lasagna for us and just the love that was poured into us. Being with our daughter and her husband, um, the goodness of being with people is a rare, beautiful thing these days. Stroking up. I think my favorite was takeout from Felton Empire Grill. It was nice not to have to cook. My feast has been supporting local restaurants, which is a fun thing to do and gets me a little um, variety in my time at home and um, a delicious meal that I don't have to cook. Well, that's an easy one because on Mother's Day, we had all of our kids here. They actually were all sheltering in place here. We had six offices set up doing Zoom meetings all the time, but we made carne asada tacos, barbecue carne asada for Maria, and we celebrated her and we were just all together. It was such a relaxed, good time. Did some home-cooked pinto beans and put them in a burrito with oven-roasted sweet potatoes, power greens, cheese, salsa, sweet and spicy jalapenos. That was so delicious. Our favorite food's been straight out of our garden. I planted um, in March when we started to shelter in place. So every day I could pick fresh vegetables and lettuce there and top it with some fish or chicken is a good day. Wow, there are so many things that I could talk about there, but the main thing would be contentment. Sheltering in place for three months hasn't been easy, but God has made it easy because I've kept my eyes on Him. One of the things that I see God doing, um, or did this last week, is He brought Jeff and I down to Ferndale Falls Bridge and down to the Ferndale Falls in Mount Hermon. And we saw this plaque about the Lord when we were enjoying nature and enjoying all the beautiful waterfall and the our dog running through the creek and getting all muddy and watery and playful and seeing these big trees and walking along the paths and smelling all the beautiful things and how oh, we've just enjoyed our garden lately but this plaque on the bridge it, it had a quote from Romans uh, 120 it says for since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse and I've noticed in this time I'm learning to trust God more to know that he is our deliverer not that he always will but that he always has a purpose for us and that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thought. Um, I don't know. I've loved being able to connect with the neighbors. Like, neighbors have stood at the fence. I've been able to talk with them from the porch, neighbors that I didn't know so well before. Um, and I think God has healed me of my cabin fever. I used to have cabin fever, but now I'm okay to stay at home. Personally, I have really felt God moving in my life, just where I, um, might be feeling discouraged or kind of tired or just overwhelmed by everything and not having normal life and God's word has been just moving in my heart and in my life and giving me just immediate peace and comfort and I told Danny this morning like just the compass that I need to get through the day and pointing and looking to God's word. How's God moving? Well I'm seeing spontaneous gatherings people that don't know each other gathering together and talking and being together just recognizing that we need each other 
and they're helping each other, they're praying together. I see kindness growing and flourishing. How do I see God moving? Uh, for me, it seemed like an extended Lent period, a time to detach from parts of normal life, to uh, listen to God, reevaluate, hit the reset button, establish some new practices. God is very personal to me, and now I have had time every morning to have devotions to talk with and listen to God moving in my life. So that has been very special. I think the relationships with my family and with the people I get to work with at High Street have become richer uh, through this experience. One of the ways I've been sensing God during this time is as Dave and I have been blazing a trail in our backyard that goes all the way down to the creek, um, it's been just a really neat opportunity for us to trailblaze. And I feel like God's been really paralleling that with our ministry and soul care um, and giving us just the confidence and the excitement um, and the vision and stepping forward. We could no activity during this time. I just find out. I focus on serving God much more than God himself. It was not right. God remind me to spend more time with him, to spend more time in the personal quiet time. God's been teaching me to slow down and enjoy life and walk the pace of grace with him. If anything, I, I consider it sort of a groundswell uh, that during this pandemic, the uneven handedness with which things are being dealt out to me has really made me think a lot about Jesus and how he saw the poor and the disenfranchised and the sick. Certainly it is shaping my view of the world to think about the way Jesus thought of things. Progress in the shelter in place being over. I've seen God working in neighbors, friends, just it seems like people are much more willing to step out and help each other and um, that's been a good thing. And what I'm really thankful for is that We've had technology during this time. We got to see our grandson graduate today because it was streamed online. Otherwise, we would have missed it. I have to say there's been multiple times where I been there's been things I really didn't want to do and knew I needed to do them and um Somehow God has helped me through some of those things and I, there's some more things I still have to do and so I'm seeing kind of the grace by moment help. The kids have been meeting with their grandparents a lot more online which has been really cool and Sam's been meeting with grandpa once a evening and doing a devotion which has been fun to see. At church we've had some amazing volunteers for helping out with the live stream and then also uh, God really kind of prepped us ahead of time for this live stream even before the pandemic so it's been neat to see him move there. Two of my relationships needed a little bit of a tune-up and I've had the time and uh, all parties concerned have had the inclination and that has come about. I'm so grateful. One thing he showed me this week is how precious our names are to him. I was walking across the meadow and I heard my brother-in-law calling my sister's name, Nancy, Nancy, where are you, Nancy? And suddenly I heard it differently. I heard it the way God hears it, with his love. Nancy, the most beautiful name in the whole world, except that he feels the same way about your name and my name and the names of all his children who have come to me. Hope you not not get sick. God has moved me during this time in really discerning what's important and what's superfluous. What can I strip away? What can wait? What do I really not need? Um, and one thing that's floated to the top has been people, friends and family. I spend so much more time now than I used to in years past talking with family and friends and figuring out um, how we can connect. I heard from friends I haven't heard from in years, years and years, and out of the blue they'll give me a call. So I hope that this continues on, this valuing of people and relationships. 
God has been working on me in mighty ways over the last couple months um, because of the slower pace of life. I've kind of had a lot more time to pray and reflect and uh, talk to God and he's been revealing some cool stuff to me throughout that specifically pertaining to um, this pace of life. Normally I live a fast paced lifestyle just going non-stop um, and I've had to slow down a lot lately which has been a huge blessing because I'm realizing that that fast paced lifestyle kind of tends to put me in a position where I start to focus more on myself and my needs and my desires but this slower paced lifestyle opens my eyes to um, just see how I can help other people, how I can be praying for other people and serve people best, which has been really good. Um, Benjamin is just growing by leaps and bounds and he started walking just a couple weeks ago and now he's all over the place and he's discovering things and he's interacting with everybody and it's uh, super fun. I miss talking to my friends. Like I miss five minutes of talking with Norma and Roger every Sunday. That's been a little hard hard to tell. Uh, one thing that's kind of I've had to work through is kind of reevaluating the expectations that I set for for my acquaintances and the people around me. Uh, I found that I'm kind of prideful and I tend to uh, push people away and think myself superior. So I've had to um, kind of think about that a little bit and maybe maybe go in a different direction in the future ways I've seen God move is during our prayer and worship nights. Every couple Thursdays we'll do these with Mount Hermon community and those around the Santa Cruz area and we just spend time singing, worshiping, praying together all online during this time where we're sheltered in place. It's been beautiful to be together to see how people are met by Jesus and to be able to worship him in the middle of the time where we're all stuck. One of the things that I'm picking up from this plague is that I don't have control over things. It's in God's hands. There's a lot of unknowns on there. And in my former business occupation, doing a lot of trial work, it was important for me to try to control the outcome and I can't do that in this case. So I've had to put more trust in God to take care of things. I think that being here during this time of isolation has um, made me more aware of how big our world is, what's happening here is not just happening here, it's everywhere. And it makes me want to be a lot more intentional about praying for um, others and not just those in my immediate circle of family and friends. I've seen God working through my cat, Tiger, and Joyce because they stopped fighting together. God has been moving me, prompting me to prayer. Way more often than normal, I pray a lot about my own questions, my own joys, my ideas, my um, thoughts, and then I'm praying for my neighborhood. I find myself praying a lot for our church. I work through the directory. I listen as God brings different ones of you to my mind, and I pray for you all the time. And then I'm just praying, like I said, for our neighborhood and our community and our world. So I've been prompted to prayer a lot more than, than normal. We've been blessed every day we wake up and thank God that our sa we're safe and our family is safe and we continue to pray for the safety of those in, that we love, those at High Street and Bible study and those in our neighborhood. The sweetness of safety, although living alone, I now look forward to meeting with two women from out of women in the Word Bible study, Bev DeBarrios and Katie Akronite. In my patio every Thursday at 10 a.m., we are properly masked and distanced and sharing our life experiences and study together. Praise the Lord. I sense God moving in our prayer group on Tuesday morning so powerfully. When I meet with the Connect group on Sundays after the service, I sense God's presence in um, all that I meet in a new way and a new awareness. And my My prayer is that I would be filled more and more with love for my immediate family as well as those around me. Um, just that I'd let his love flow through me and stop trying to generate it on my own. And lastly, my prayer is uh, for everyone, uh, but particularly our nation, is that we come out of this unified and whole uh, and with peace 
uh, I hope that happens. Amen. And my prayer moving forward is that as we're going back to normal life, life would not go back to normal, um, that we would realize how beautiful it is to sit and relax with God and enjoy Him. And we pray that the church will be the church, uh, not just a building, but people will be reaching out to others and be really lights for the world. Prayer. What would I ask you to pray for? Mm, I want more of Jesus. If I could have anything in the world, I want more of Jesus. And then for prayer requests, bless the tech. To see my friends um, going to church. I pray that this time of shelter in place would have been sharpening for us as a church and a community, that it would allow High Street to be a welcoming, hospitable place for people who are hungry to know the Lord, to ask questions about Him, about life, and that High Street would be able to grow as a church and bless the community through this season. And my prayer at this time is uh, as we move in a transitional time in the coming months that we will know and share God's love with others. Well, my prayer is for the softening of people's hearts, that the seed of faith would grow that praying together would grow, that the healing work of the Holy Spirit in our neighborhoods would bind us together, like my cucumber that's clinging to its trellis. I pray that this forced pause, this pruning of our lives will produce much fruit for the Master Gardener. My prayer is for High Street to be able to meet again in church. I miss seeing all of you. I miss hugs. I miss Nick and Mabel's greetings at the door. And um, I just look forward to the day that we can be together again. Um, personally, I am just praying that God will give me opportunities to be a light in my community, in my neighborhood, when we're walking our dog, and just running into people, um, my coworkers, and my family, honestly, my family. Um, that I would be a light and a positive encouragement. That's my prayer. My prayer is for families everywhere, because this is a difficult time with so much closeness, that they can have the love and the peace that God wants for families. And for our church, that we will continue to preach God's word and to love each other. That it will be over in like a week. My prayer for our church and our community and our world during this time has been that as our walls are down, our comforts are stripped away, that we're better able to grow in intimacy with Jesus and hearing his voice, better able to respond to him, to receive his comfort and receive his care and receive his guidance as we move forward. I pray that we can get back together again, more like normal as soon as it's safe. I do understand that 80,000 of the 100,000 people that have died in America were 65 and over. So I pray for us 65ers. Because a lot of people are worried about the future, worry about the virus. So I pray for them. They can find rest, find peace on Jesus. And my prayer um, for everyone during this time is that we never take advantage of uh, personal interaction again and that we really soak up those moments we have with each other. As we are on the cusp of returning to um, being together again, I am uh, praying that we honor each other. We all have different ideas and uh, maybe that God will have brought in others who have heard Danny and Dave's lovely sermons on um, the before and after. I found those so encouraging. My prayer is that God's kingdom would come, his will be done on earth here at High Street and in your lives and throughout our community as it is in heaven. Our prayer request, um, well my prayer request is I'm seeing a lot of division in our greater community and um, Everybody has an opinion about how things should move forward from this point and how we should open things back up. And um, 
I'm just seeing that division get intensified the further into it we go because all our opinions don't match. So just prayers for our community and for peace in that. Um, yeah, that's my main prayer request. Talking about prayer, um, I'm not sure where the next few years are going to take me. I just hope you would pray that I would get some direction in that area. And our prayer for the future is that our culture and all the cultures of the world become God-oriented, Christ-oriented, and not self-oriented. Lord, may this time of pandemic and separation from loved ones and life as we know it bring us closer to you in the blessed assurance that you are with us for all eternity. We are not alone, ever. Amen. Just to have eyes to see, ears to hear, what is what is God saying to us? How is God um, showing up during this time? And I would say in the resourcefulness, the creativity of people, when we just um, receive inspiration, especially from God, um, about how to make the, the most of this time and not not lose what there might be for us to to learn from it um, community we're praying for everybody hope to see everybody soon and then my prayer is that we would learn from this challenge this time out this sense that what are we doing that we could change that we shouldn't be doing anymore what aren't we doing that we could do and really leverage this time my prayer request is that the coronavirus goes away my prayer is to be able to trust him more and enjoy his presence my prayer request is for unity i'm very concerned about the divisions especially as we try to get back together as a church and opinions are all over the place please lord have mercy on us praying that the coronavirus will be over and my prayer for our church, for our world and our community, at the eyes of our heart would be deeply opened to Jesus, to his remarkable love, and that each of us would be so filled with his love that we could pour it out to everyone that we meet. And my prayer for our church is that every person would experience God's provision in their lives in some way, no matter what that might be and that they could use their experience to tell a friend or family, somebody else who needs to hear the hope and the promise of the gospel and how God takes care of those he loves. Blessings on you all. Bye. God bless each of you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye. So, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. And stay well. I love you all, and I miss you. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hope to see you all soon. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.